Hey, it's Deb, and I'm hanging, 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 hanging out under um, my trellis of cucumbers, and I'm so excited. These things are producing. I'm picking like four a day. It's crazy, and I wanted to share with you what I'm doing right now that we're in like, you know, high season of production, and hopefully this this will help you. A couple of things that are important to do now that we're into this time of year. One is to pick the fruit. Get out here, get out to your cukes. I do it morning and night before I go to work and when I get home in the evening, it's my happy thing to do. And I look for cucumbers to pick. You don't want to let them get too big, okay? Because the sooner you pick them, the sooner that plant can take the energy it was putting into that cucumber and and provide energy to new ones. Does that make sense? So the more you pick, the more you have, okay? Let me show you something. So when to pick. This one, beautiful. Probably could have picked that a little sooner. That one's smaller, you can see that. Um, but yeah, I got these just in time. I would not want these to be any larger. Uh, but I'll tell you, cucumbers are really good at playing hide and seek. And this happened to me. I had one that looked like a zucchini because I didn't see it. It was hiding from me, but I got it. And they don't always look like this. Look at this baby. This one I just picked, you know, little round thing, isn't that fun? Okay, so pick, 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 and pick some more. Give them away to friends, eat them. They're fantastic. The other thing to keep in mind, cucumbers need water. So pay attention to how much water they're getting. We just had three days of rain. Okay, so even if you have rain, because there's all this foliage now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the rain is getting to the roots of the plant where it's needed. So even after rain, you want to go and hi, hi plane. Uh, you want to check the base of the roots, do the finger test, and see if you need to get some water in there. Uh, when you do water, be sure to water at the base of the plant and not water all over the foliage, okay? Now, if you're lucky enough and you have a nice irrigation system in your beds, I'm a little jealous because I don't. My irrigation system is my hose and my watering can. That's all I get. Maybe someday. So I just want to just want to be sure that you don't get water all over the foliage because Here's the other thing that um, I'm watching this time of year, powdery mildew. It's gross. It happened to my plant last year. It's a bummer. And basically what happens is the leaves get this like, looks like baby powder and they can dry up. Uh, it won't kill your plant, but it certainly takes away from production. And it's just not something you wanna deal with. So uh, one way to avoid that is to not have a lot of water sitting on your plant. And I also use this, and I don't get paid to say it, but um, this bonide fungono, multi-purpose fungicide, um, this is organic. I, I am being proactive and I'm spraying these um, down, usually right before I know it's going to rain or right after it's rained, maybe once a week or so. So I'm you know, there are other things you can use that, that you, you can look up, but that's working for me. Um, speaking of water, I'm going back to that. You see how this one's kind of curling? It's about noon. It's midday here in a beautiful main day. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's just, it's getting some sun or if it needs to be watered. Um, but I'm going to check that. And if it needs to be watered, I'm going to wait until later, um, today when the sun's not so hot on the plants. Along with um, watering, you wanna feed your babies. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using. It's working for me. Uh, there's a lot of good products out there, but this is what I'm using. Uh, trying it this year, so far so good. This is the um, uh, Neptune Harvest Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer. You can see I got it all over the bottle. I'm a messy feeder. <clears throat> I put two caps to a gallon, and then I add a cap of this cow mag. Uh, this is from Fox Farm, and it's supposed to be good. And I've heard from other gardeners that they use it. I use it on the tomatoes too. Calcium's a good thing. So I do two caps, one cap in a gallon, and about every seven to 10 days, I'm doing that. And the other thing I've been doing, 
I've been trying with this bone-eyed or trying this bone-eyed tomato and blossom set spray and it's a ready-to-use natural plant hormone that um, provides biological grow power to promote blossom set and fruit development uh, so I use this about once a week mostly early on and I'm still probably gonna apply it here and there so that's what I'm feeding them with the other thing I'm doing is pruning and what I'm pruning, I'm pruning for a couple of reasons. One, and the most important reason, is airflow and air circulation. So I go through morning and evening, and I will just prune off. If there's a big cluster of leaves, I might, you know, pull one out. I use a, I use a pruner thing, not my fingers, but I don't have it with me. And that just helps with airflow. That, again, can help prevent the powdery mildew on these plants. It can also, um, good air circulation is important to all of the plants I have in this raised bed. So I wanna be sure that there's good airflow throughout um, the garden. So I will pick these off. I also pick off anything that doesn't look good, like that got a little too much water. Um, so I particularly will remove some of the lower leaves. The upper leaves are good because they provide protection for your fr fruit and it's all and they also um you know provide um the photosynthesis thing that um plants need to grow oh and another reason to prune back is because it makes it easier to find the hide and seek cucumbers and it makes it easier for because i'm watching a bee right now a couple of them <laughs> Um, it makes it easier for those wonderful pollinators we love so much to find the blossoms. Okay, so that's another reason I prune. The other thing I prune, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know if everybody does this, but um, the tendrils. So these tendrils are here. Uh, so the com the computer, <laughs> oh my gosh, the cucumber. You know, I don't redo stuff. Like you get me. You just get me, uh, and I am far from perfect, so I don't do overs. Do do overs? Oh my gosh, it's not even noon. Okay, uh, where was I? So the tendrils are really important because they help the plant grab onto things, so it can have something to hold on to. And especially when you're growing on a trellis, you want those to climb up. But I'm looking around the bottom of the plant, and there's a whole lot of plants that have spilled out out of the raised bed. They've got nothing to hold on to, baby. Nothing to grab on to. So what I do is I just go around and pinch off these tendrils because these take energy away from the plant that could be going back into more cucumbers. That's what we want. So I do that. If that's wrong, tell me. That's what I've been doing. Okay, so that is how I'm managing um, my cucumber plants right now. And so far, no powder and mildew so far. We've had a ton of fruit so far. The pollinators are all over them. There's still a lot of blossoms so far, so good. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep you posted how things are going and growing here in um, my raised beds. Uh, and please comment with, like, if you're growing cucumbers and you're having success, I'd love to hear from you. What do you do? What do you use? What do you feed them with? How are yours going and growing? And um, that's what this channel is here for, to share some tips and tricks. Thanks for hanging out with me and my main gardens. I'll talk to you later.